Welcome back. Uh, you're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. And of course, um, uh, we have a guest uh, joining us to analyze um, the next uh, issue right here on the program. And this has to do with um, the release of the prelate of the Methodist Church in Nigeria, um, his eminence, uh, Dr. Samuel Kalu Uche. Well, the prelate of the Methodist Church in Nigeria, uh, who was abducted by hoodlums in Abia State, has said that 100 million naira was paid by the church to secure his freedom. The cleric who spoke during the press briefing in Lagos on Tuesday said the kidnappers showed him decomposing bodies of some past victims of kidnap. Uh, Kanlu Uche was abducted on Sunday along the Enuguport Hackett Expressway in the Umu Neochi local government area of Abia State Axis. Um, said he was taken together with his chaplain, a very reverend Abidemi Shitu, and the Bishop of Oweri, uh, Right Reverend Dennis Mark. Now, Earlier, the Abia State Governor Okeze Pazu had released a statement attributing the safe release of the kidnapped prelate of Methodist Church Nigeria to quote the grace of God, the fervent prayers of the Christian community, and what he called the well-coordinated response from uh, the security agencies in Abia State. Let's uh, um, welcome at this point our guest, Mohammed Abdullahi, uh, who is a public affairs analyst, as we analyze some of the things that were said. Uh, by his eminence, uh, most, uh, um, his eminence, Dr. Samuel Kaluchi, uh, the prelate of Methodist Church, Nigeria. Uh, Mohammed Abdullahi, good morning to you. Thanks for your time. Uh, good morning, Nigeria. Thanks for having me. All right. All right. There's a lot to unpack um, from what the prelate of the Methodist Church said. But let's start from what the Abia state government said in a statement release that was signed by the chief press secretary uh, to Governor Oke Zeke Pazu. The governor is saying that he's attributing the release of uh, uh, this clergyman to the grace of God, that's number one. Number two, the fervent prayers of the Christian community. Um, uh, number three, he talked about well-coordinated response of the um, security agencies in Abia state. Now, forward, uh, fast forward some moments later, the, the, the clergyman holds a press conference and says, hey, we paid 100, we paid 100 million naira before we were released. Uh, we raised 130 million naira, but paid 100 million naira in five sacks of 20 million naira each. And this money was counted cash by the, uh, the abductors before we were released, even at gunpoint. What do you say to this? I think the government in uh, the government is only trying to save its face. Uh, but we all know, I'm sure an average citizen in this country understand that uh, uh, we are just waiting for catastrophe or um, negativity to happen because uh, we really do not have uh, our security apparatus are not really up to the task. Uh, we must uh, we must say this as it is. Uh, so, like you mentioned, what the government of Abia State did, uh, like usually, even the federal government would do, and all other uh, types of government, what they usually do is just to put out a propaganda statement, you know, for people to see or to seem as if they are working. But um, uh, it's, it's even so late now because Nigerians are wiser. Nigerians understand how these things are, are, are played out. Nigerians understand that uh, even when government refused to mention that ransom is paid, we know heavily that uh, ransom has been paid. Uh, and to, to confirm that, the, the abductee himself came out to narrate the, his ordeal in the hands of these deadly evil people. You know, so um, it's really unfortunate that government is uh, abdicating its, du its duties of um, securing lives, most importantly, and then properties, which is another important thing of its citizens, is very, very unfortunate. Whether you live, you stay indoors, you travel within Nigeria, you are at risk. So it's so, so unfortunate uh, that uh, we find ourselves in this kind of precarious uh, uh, situation. I must say that the major cause of this, um, this, this, this insecurity is the fact that we have refused as a people and as a government to plan ahead. We have, we have, we have been very visionless as a, as a government and as a people. Let me give you a typical, a small example. I just arrived in Nigeria last, uh, yesterday afternoon, 
uh, from Kigali, a very small country, you know. The, 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 the topography of, of, of Rwanda and Kigali as a whole is very hilly, you understand? It's hills everywhere, and you wonder how, how this would get to develop such topography. But what am I trying to say? Because they understand that if you are going down the hill, it's very likely that you lose your brake and so on and so forth. Uh, then if you are also going uphill, it's very likely that you are able not to drive well. So there is speed limit everywhere in Kigali. And the global standard is 100 kilometers. 100 uh, meters per hour. Uh, uh, the speed limit is uh, 100 per kilometer, uh, uh, per 100 kilometer. You understand? What they do is that it's 60 everywhere in Kigali. And how do they enforce this? There is CCTV in every major road. So you don't need to say, no, no policeman is standing there to police you, to say you must, but they know. Every Kigali, and even as a foreigner, you know, it is imbibed in you, that discipline is there. You can't move beyond 60. Hmm. You understand? Right. So what am I trying to say? But here, we've seen this right from when we fought the civil war. I wasn't born, but we, we I heard that. We've seen the issues that we have issues with ethnicity, we have issues with religion, we have issues with tribalism. But for the past 30 or so years, even after the civil war, we have refused to plan. You understand? And so these hoodlums, these kidnappers, these deadly evil people have seen that, yeah, you have, an very, you have a very unserious government, uh, whether present and even the incoming one. And I must, we, must, we must tell ourselves the truth. Very, very unserious government, very unserious people. So we can continue to do what we want. So how many times have we heard of kidnappings all across Nigeria, people paying huge amounts? And... This number goes quite free. Hmm. Uh, it's, All right. It's, it's really important. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, uh, so, so this is quite, um, I mean, uh, you're saying the governor was just trying to save face. Um, we're aware that um, uh, Governor Ekpazu may have been, uh, was at the PDP um, uh, presidential primary in Abuja, which held on Sunday. Um, this particular uh, uh, you know, kidnap took place on Sunday, and the man was released next day, being Monday. Uh, so I don't know, maybe the governor may not have been on ground uh, to, to order um, that uh, the security apparatus be deployed in its full weight, like they normally say, to release this man, who the prelate himself is an indigent of Abia state. And like you said, maybe this was a move to say, so say something, you know, but how do you go say what didn't happen? I mean, your government, you can just place a call and say, oh, uh, police, uh, military, um, mm. did you, were you involved in this or not? Because the prelate categorically said neither the federal government, nor the state government, nor the police, nor the military were involved in his rescue. So what does this say about our, our leaders, the governors, the governance in Nigeria, that such a blunder, you know, can be committed in trying to just put out a statement, you assume? I mean, you wouldn't make that. Even a secondary school student cannot make such a mistake. How, what does this say about governance in the country? It, it is not. It is not a mistake, sir. It is not a mistake. Uh, uh, it's, it's not a mistake at all. Like I said before, is a is a well thought out plan. You know, always by government, whether from uh, federal government, state government, local government. You know, to always put out propaganda. You know, we see black and they tell us it's red or blue, as if we are uh, dull people, as if we are not even educated at all to differentiate right from wrong. So it's um it's quite unfortunate, uh, you know. The the best word is like, like I mentioned earlier, the government trying to save its face because it has failed in statutory duty of uh, protecting lives and properties. All right, um, Miss Abdullah, so can, can you please hold that, the thought? Like I mentioned, whether you traveled far north in Nigeria, you travel far east, south, you know, wherever you are at the risk of being abducted. That All is right. so shocking. Yeah, Miss Abdullah, you know can, can you please you know hold that, the thought? Uh, to um, to in yeah. terms of even the economy. Yeah, please, please hold the thought. Let's quickly roll a tape. Um, listen to a few uh, seconds of what uh, His Eminence had to say. We'll come back to you and then we we'll round up. I'm about to catch up with my flight. I'm going 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 to catch up with my flight. And uh, as we were descending to live, live in Zimbabwe State, 
this book came out from the book. They divided themselves into three places. Some people were at the back, some people were at the center, those who shot, who fired at us. And there was another group in front. To make sure that we didn't run away. They fired shots at our vehicle. And eventually they abducted us, three of us. The uh, communication man of the church was able to escape. The driver was able to escape. They captured me, the, the Bishop of Owere, and my chaplain took us into the bush and were torturing us. In fact, it was uh, in the process of uh, that torture that I hit my right eye on a tree. And uh, even when blood was flowing and I was, it was soaking my handkerchief. They didn't feel like uh, anything happened. All they said that we should follow them, that they are not actually against uh, Nigerian citizens, they are against the government. But that government is a bad government. They are full of boys. All of all the eight are full of That they are, they are full of boys, and that uh, if they any day they see the president, they will chew him. Is that their brother that they have disappointed them and disappointed Nigerians? They will chew him wrong. Or any of his representatives, they will chew him wrong. But I said, well, even though I'm part of government, but I'm a church man. I'm a man, Christian. I'm not a, a government official. I said, okay. Uh, that is what has saved you. You would have killed you outrightly without asking for any ransom. But now that you're a church man, uh, let's go. Let's go inside the bush. So we moved and moved and moved and moved. Uh, and, and trek up to 15 kilometers. But I knew that it was from my area. I knew that we were like marrowing and winding and winding. And we said that, okay, now we negotiate. Each of us will pay 50 million. And we're going to pay 150 million. Uh, they claim that Nigeria belongs to Fulani. They said, if that is why we're afraid of, you know, I've been talking about this uh, open grazing and uh, this work. Uh, so uh, the boys will carry one gram of goat who put in the truck until they took the hundred and after they have come from the truck, hundred million. They said, okay, you can go. So that's how we came back. So uh, the people have been saying, even some people, I don't know what they wanted to achieve, but I said, when did they see me to say that it was I pop that released me? <laughs> when did they see me? When did I say I pop? I didn't say that I pop. So I don't know, they were trying to bring in political and religious coloration. So what I know was that, uh, in fact, when they were talking about market, that I didn't know what it meant. For over 12, 13, 14, 15 hours, no food, nothing to drink, nothing to eat. And I was lying on the ground. <laughs> All right, Mohammed Abdullah, I'm sure you heard uh, uh, some of what he said there. Um, he is uh, claiming that uh, uh, his, abduct his abductors were um, uh, Nigerians or, or, or Fulani extraction. Um, you know, that they said that Nigeria belongs to them, et cetera, et cetera, that uh, they're against President Buhari, that if they see him, they'll chew him alive. Um, he, he made a lot of, uh, you know, he said a lot of things and made some, a lot of revelations we can't go into all of it because of time. But what, 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 what do you say to this? Um, uh, some people have jumped on it to say that, oh, it shows that those who are shooting and killing and maiming and causing carnage in the Southeast in the name of unknown government are indeed from the North. Uh, yeah, it's uh, quite revealed a lot. But again, I don't want us to draw uh, a conclusion that uh, all the carnages uh, and evil things that have been happening across our country is from a particular region or a particular tribe, like we ascribe to uh, Fulanis. In fact, there are very bad people everywhere in all of our, uh, our region, and there are good people as well everywhere. Uh, so it th I think it's even very important that we downplay tribe and ethnicity. What we must as a people do is to confront evil at all of our regions, whether it be in the north, south, or west. We must confront evil and destroy it collectively. By the time we begin to 
ascribe a particular tribe or a particular region with uh, all the ills that is happening or confronting our, com our country, it, uh, it doesn't speak well uh, for our future. You know, so uh, I think it's very important that we understand that whether it be it south, east, west, as I mentioned earlier, there are good people and uh, there are bad people. All we need to do as, uh, as, 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 as Nigerians is to confront uh, the bad eggs around us. And again, uh, we must also tell our government that they must rise up to the equation of uh, saving lives and properties. In fact, it is very, very important that this uh, incoming election is uh, an issue that we put into the front burner for all of the candidates aspiring to be. You can't, as a president, be promising heaven on earth, you know, turning Nigeria into Dubai, when our major issue for now, I think everyone will agree, our major issue for now is the fact that we lack security. I, I, I was trying to give you an example before we went for uh, the, the clip earlier. I told you I'm from Undo State. Uh, my parents, are based in the north, we were born in the north. I speak Hausa better than my even Yoruba. But uh, prior to 2018, I used to travel with my family every December from, my, from, from Lagos. I would drive down to Odo State, say hello for about three, two days to, uh, to my grandparents, move to Abuja where my parents are, another two weeks or so. I'm coming back, I would drive to Kaba where my mother is from, say hello to my grandparents there. Then uh, before I drive to Lagos, all driving. But I tell you, since 2018, I, I can't there. In fact, when I make the call to, to call my parents and I'm bringing down my parents via the road, my father will tell me, hey, just sit down, stay where you are. Because everyone is afraid. Everyone is scared. How do you have a country where citizens are scared to move around in their own country? Not even for foreigners. So it's so shocking. So government must rise to its occasion of saving lives and properties. And we as people also must be disciplined. We know some of these people that live, that they live around us. It is unfortunate that you find out now that your cousin, your nephew, whenever they know your movement, they also contact these deadly guys to say, okay, a so, so so person is moving around this corridor uh, by this so time and time. Uh, it's, so, so it's so unfortunate. We must be disciplined as people. We must also be sure and, and help the government in fishing out these bad eggs and de uh, devilish people are, are in our midst. All right. Uh, Mohammed Abdullahi, thank you very much for your time. Uh, it remains to be seen if uh, the situation will improve or if uh, uh, President Buhari will go down in history as the general who couldn't secure his country. Thank you very much for your time. And that's the size of our package. Don't forget you can follow us on our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram handle. Simply search for Plus TV Africa. On YouTube, we are at Plus TV Africa. And for a live stream on YouTube, you can find us at Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. From all of us here, the entire team, including those you can't see on the screen. My name is Kofi Bartels. We'll be back tomorrow. Keep watching Plus TV. Up next, we have the news at night.